Uh, Senator Cardin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, let me thank all five of our nominees for their public service and their willingness to continue to serve during extremely challenging times, and we thank your families because we know it's a, a family uh, sacrifice, so thank you for being willing to do this. Uh, I want to focus on some of the human rights issues and the influence of China in the region. So first, uh, Mr. Goddick, let, let me uh, talk a little bit about Thailand. Obviously, they play a key role in regards to the crisis in Burma, and you mentioned that uh, during your, your testimony. I want to bring up uh, an issue in trafficking in persons. Uh, their most recent report, they went backwards from being on Tier 2 to Tier 2 watch list. They, the report spells out uh, the challenges they have with forced labor as well as sex trafficking. So tell me your commitment, uh, as uh, if confirmed, as to how you will uh, uh, promote uh, Thailand taking the necessary steps to end this form of modern day slavery. Thank you for the uh, question, Senator. Um, you have raised a very important issue. Thailand has had a, a significant problem with um, trafficking in persons. That was reflected in the change in its, its ranking, its downgrade in its ranking. Um, this is a, a subject that we uh, talk uh, to the Thai about regularly at the highest levels. Um, it is a, a subject where the United States, through a number of agencies, has provided some support and assistance to try to get some improvement. Um, we have seen some progress, but there is a lot more that remains to be done. And I would commit, if confirmed, to uh, doing everything possible to, to make progress. I would note that the Prime Minister recently did a public event, for example, where he uh, gave recognition to a number of agencies and people who were doing some things in this area. Um, and it's good to see high-level engagement, but there is a lot that needs to be done in this area. Let, let me just, uh, we, we have a lot of issues with, with Thailand. We recognize mm -hmm. that. We're trying to make advancements, particularly as it relates to the humanitarian issues in, mm -hmm. in Burma. Do we have your assurances that you will give objective observations as to the progress they're making on trafficking? We've seen in the past sometimes other politics enter into this. This is too fundamental of a human rights commitment that you will give us objective accounts as to the progress or lack of progress in that country. Absolutely, Senator. I will do that. I've done it in my previous positions, and I would commit to doing it again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Bugan, in regards to uh, Mongolia, Mongolia is an interesting country. It's now a member of the OSCE, uh, so we deal with them in the Helsinki Commission. Uh, they believe they have uh, two geographical neighbors in China and Russia, but they consider their third neighbor to be the United States. So we've seen a significant uh, uh, strategic partnership with the United States that can clearly be uh, improved. So I just really want to make the observation there's strong support here in the Senate to expand trade opportunities and other opportunities with Mongolia, because we see this as a real opportunity for America to have a strong strategic partner in the region. Thank you very much uh, for that comment, Senator. I could not agree more. Uh, we are their third uh, neighbor. In fact, we are their preferred third neighbor. They're also seeking to um, uh, expand relationships with other open market economies and democracies like Japan and South Korea. Uh, but you're exactly right. Um, we need to be able to do more to um, help them uh, build strong and resilient democratic systems, uh, open market economies, given the challenge that their uh, neighbors uh, with China and Russia uh, and the over overwhelming influence and coercion uh, that those two countries are bearing right now in Mongolia. Mrs. DeMora, I just really tell you how excited we are about having a confirmed ambassador for the five countries that you refer to. I would dare say that many Americans don't even know the names of some of these uh, Pacific Island states. When we look at their influence in, our, in the United Nations and other entities, it can play an important role for U.S. strategic diplomacy. The same thing's true with the Caribbean island states that are very small and we generally do not pay much attention to. China is paying attention uh, to the five countries that you would be representing us at. 
So we do look forward to you giving us some concrete recommendations as to how we can strengthen our ties in these countries. It doesn't take very much. Paying a little bit of attention to them is what they really want. Uh, but we're going to need a game plan on how we can strengthen our ties with these countries and use that as a model in other areas where the United States has really been missing in action and China has been moving very aggressively in. Senator, thank you very much for those comments. And I think you're right. I think a lot of Americans could not find Kiribati on a map. But everybody knows about the Battle of Tarawa. We understand our historic role in that region. And I was very pleased to see the announcement yesterday of the intent of the Biden-Harris administration, um, subject to notification and consultation uh, with Congress, to open two new embassies in Tonga, in, in Kiribati. Um, we, will also, I, if confirmed, I very much look forward to being part of the process to developing the first U.S. national strategy for the Pacific Islands. You're absolutely right. We need to show up. We need to up our game. We need to be there in person. And I would certainly hope, um, if confirmed, I would be able to consult with you, the members of the committee and your staffs, on how we can ensure sus consistent, sustained, high-level visits to the region to demonstrate in person that we are there and we are part of their future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.